Coach, we are less than 24 hours after we saw you with a trophy and cutting down nets in Indianapolis. Has it sunk in what you've done and where you're going next week to the NCAA tournament? Well, it has not sunk in with me yet. I think I'm getting the joy out of uh, our coaching staff's reactions and their smiles and also our young people, man. They're ecstatic uh, seeing these guys happy and, and the feeling on their face uh, you know, speaks for it all. And, and you got to understand sometimes when you, when you build things and, and you, you, you give the confidence, it has to come with a blind faith. It has to come with a trust and you're leading to leading young people to a place that they, they may not know the way they may not know the journey. We just need their hearts involved and their spirits at all times. And obviously they're giving us everything that they have. Hopefully they they've made, uh, the Viking nation proud. Um, and, and we're going to continue to do, do our very best along the way. You know, I have to tell you, um, as someone that's been around here a long, long time, <laughs> I remember in 1986, I was over, um, you know, at the Woodland yeah. Gym when the Vikings got the news that they had gotten into that tournament, and then they yeah. went on and had a magical ride, and how excited the town was. And the town had a, that kind of feel last night after watching the game. Well, I'll tell you what, man, it, it's, you know, COVID has allowed, um, you know, people to appreciate and revalue things in their life, restructure, re, re, re-examine, um, and hopefully in their hearts, they can see um, as the world around them has been still, they can see what joy Cleveland State University has brought to their lives uh, and to the city of Cleveland. Uh, this moment where eyes have been all on us, a national televised game on ESPN, I can't imagine no one watching, right? I, I, I truly believe it was the biggest stage we've been on in a while, but also one that our guys knew the responsibility of. Um, you know, it, we, we did it for our former players. Um, you know, you think of Coach Mackey, you think of Gary Waters, mm-hmm. you know, being able to leave their mark on this program the way that they had and in a positive way no matter what has gone on no matter how long their tenure lasted they still deserve uh the respect um and and that's what i did from day one and that's what our young men did from day one you got to respect the history and tradition of a program to get and add on to it you can't add to something you know nothing about and it has to really be in your heart as a as a, as an educator, it has to be in your spirit. You got to know the 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 uh, sort of architecture structure related to what you're trying to accomplish. And our guys understood it, and they're going to continue to understand it. As it's my role, my job, my responsibility to hold up a mirror and make sure they see the best version of themselves and the best ver- version of this program. Um, I have to tell you, and I'm only talking about just the Horizon League tournament. Yeah. This was not easy. Let's go back to that first game at the Wolstein Center. Mm-hmm. Um, you're six seconds away in that second overtime and a banked three-point yeah. shot that gets you into the third overtime. Absolutely. And you come back and win. Uh, your team really answered a lot of challenges. Yeah. It's tough being the number one seed, isn't it? There's no doubt about it because we were in a new position. We got everyone's best shot, and we had a bullseye on our back. We wasn't chasing a bullseye. Uh, if you had to ask Al Javon Eichelberger if he would rather play 20 straight games in Horizon League as the preseason second team player, right, yeah. or those three games in the postseason and have the impact on this trophy that we got right. and this net that we cut down and the batter, banner will eventually hang, he wouldn't trade that in the world because at that moment he knew how he, he has impacted this program in that moment. And that moment is in this postseason. And obviously I'm proud of the three games that our guys were able to play and the outcome of last night's event where we were named champions. Well, it was nice watching you last night with that nice double digit lead. You <laughs> built up by halftime and kind of kept there. And I know they took yeah. a couple of runs at that lead last night, Absolutely. but it really was nice watching you with the lead. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I, we've gotten so much text messages and, and everything else, how we've been hard on the cardiovascular system. (laughs) So (laughs) we apologize, but, you know, it's credit to the programs. It's credit to the Horizon League and the great coaches and great players 
it hadn't been easy, man. I'll tell you that. But our guys have kept fight, fighting and plucking along. Hey, I have to ask you this. Um, a couple of years ago when you took the job and you came over to the television station that night after your press conference and we got a chance to meet you. And yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. You walked out the door and I said to myself, man, this guy's got a tough job ahead of him. Um, has this happened quicker than you thought it might? I just look at it as it, it happened when the players were ready to earn what they've received. You can't put time, you can't put a stamp on it. You got to be re ready to, to um, you know, take the moment. You got to seize the day, seize the moment. And our guys built up enough equity in their hard work behind the scenes to, to achieve what they have achieved. And I wish there was a camera following us every moment. I wish mm -hmm. there was a, 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 a sort of a paragraph to explain every sacrifice that they have made, but also something that allows you to look into their hearts and see how much love they have for each other. And that is what allowed us to get here. Mm -hmm. And they earned every right to be named champions because of those things that they did before the game in preparation for the moment. And somewhere along the lines, they 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 had a coach in myself who just believed they can do something that no one thought they could do. Yeah. And that's what we talked about every day. Yeah. Um, tell me this now. You're staying in Indiana, right? You're staying in Indianapolis? Yes, sir. Uh, what will you do until you start this this journey, this next journey, which is going to be thrilling in the NCAA tournament? Well, I'll tell you this this morning. You know, we we went got up this morning, went to go take take our COVID test for the protocol, and the first thing we started doing was calling each other champ. What's up, champ? How you doing, champ? <laughs> so I don't think anyone has gone by their legal name here since, but we have called each other. Hey, champ, how you doing, champ? And and now you got ten people turning around like, oh, did you call me? <laughs> so you know, right now we're enjoying the moment, uh, and hopefully our fans and our city is a joint enjoying it with us. And, you know, I, I appreciate you guys for having us on and being able to be the organ to, um, you know, our voices. And I think when you look at the big picture, there hadn't been a moment in our season where we hadn't felt connected. And it's because of guys like you and your profession connecting us with our fans. So do you do a little bit of bracketology yourself to kind of figure out where will they put us? Who will who could we play in the opening round? Well, I, I don't look at it, <laughs> to be honest with you, but it's selection Sunday. It's a holiday that yeah. every college student athlete in athletics, in basketball, dream of. And being in that moment of selection Sunday is something that we share with our alumni. It's for them. It's for our former players. It's for it's for the media. It's for the city of Cleveland to enjoy, because ultimately we have to do our job. And our job is to first our number one opponent is ourselves, Cleveland State University. And, and whoever we play is the second opponent. But we have to be the best version of Cleveland State University at all times. And we got it. That comes with a cost that comes with a, uh, a sacrifice. And we have to continue to be that that team that can uh, go out there and give your, give the very best. Well, we'll be tuning in on Sunday, like all of you and your coaches and your teammates, <laughs> and uh, we'll be seeing what line you're going to be put on. Uh, this has been a really fun story to watch unfold. You're the author of it. Your kids are, they are the, they're the main people in it. Uh, it's great to see that that program gets some real solid blood running through its yeah. lanes, uh, veins yeah. once again, and to bring that kind of to bring college basketball to to downtown Cleveland again, it's great. So I'll end it this way, Coach. Congratulations, but I I'm going to call you Champ. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> champ. <laughs> hey, I, I know how to respond to that. Thank you. I appreciate you. Go Vikes, and I appreciate you know that sit down, man. That first sit down that we had when I first got the job. You made you made it so comfortable for me and I appreciate you for that.